What you are about to see is a dramatization of one of the most controversial and bitterly debated police investigations preceding the Supreme Court's landmark Miranda decision of 1966. Name changes, compressions of time, and composites of certain characters have been made in order to present this most significant story. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to Kathy? sit down together at the How table go? of motherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have Melissa? A my Kathy, poor little that... children oh, no. will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the color of their skin. What are you doing character. here? I have a dream today. How did you get in? is one of the most appealing and magnetic personalities in our country today. That is clear in the faces and the attitudes of the crowds here. Melissa! The tangible effects of today's events will be on the vast American public has yet to be seen. No one really knows the heart of America. Whether all the years of hatred and racial violence are a thing of... Hello! Whether we have now turned a corner... Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. What's going on here? I see what's going on here. Kathy, don't do anything and he won't hurt you. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. Give me my glasses. I want to see you. I want to see what you look like. Don't touch me. Jerry, uh, could you come over here, please? Go into the kitchen, Melissa. Jerry. Go into the kitchen. <laughs> Jerry, what? The phone. Jerry? Where's the police, please? Come on. See? 
Don't go in there. Oh. Don't go in. Jerry! Nelson murders. The Supreme Court would rock. Laws of the country change, separating the country in two. And as for me, it would change the way I looked at my neighbor, my city, my country, and myself. Sure glad to get out of that apartment. Nobody should die like that. That's the way chickens are executed. You have to be Kojak in charge of this investigation. We can't help him answer the first call on a homicide. Ah, there he is. Hello, Inspector. Strong. Are you coming in? Just for a minute. We're due downtown. Still with the Italian suits, I see. Well, I'm very happy you noticed. You know, when I was a kid, I promised myself two things. Number one, that I'd be rich. And number two, that I'd stop wearing my big brother's hand-me-downs. Well, I ain't rich, but at least I dress well. Until my tailor throws me in a can, that is. We're gonna have to put more men on the case. Well, how many? Homicide experts from all over town. How many? Uh, about a hundred. Oh, why don't you make it five hundred? What do you mean? I mean, why don't you make it a thousand? Kojak, after everything we've just gone through with you, are Career, you going to start as a way of life in Manhattan? The parents are not only solid citizens, they're also celebrities. Now, you're going to have to cooperate with us. You're going to have a hundred detectives falling all over themselves for promotion. It's not your business to determine policy. No, that's uh, your department. The assignments have already gone out. You'll meet with them on 88th Street in the morning. Welcome to the National Policeman's Convention. <laughs> It's so good to know that the community is being protected by such stalwart representatives from Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. Hey, Staten Island? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Staten Island? The matter will be of interest to you, I'm sure, is point of access. There's a doorman downstairs, I'm sure you've noticed. And he says that nobody was admitted into the apartment at the time of the murders. There's also a service entrance downstairs. The door locks automatically. Well, sure, somebody could have climbed a wall, come through the window. But the nearest ledge is eight feet away. So that means the murder would have to be a cat burglar or a circus performer, which isn't very likely. All right, come here, follow me. Murder weapons in the bathroom sink, three knives, two broken, and that's not easy to do. Follow the trail. The bodies were lying here, bound together by strips of sheet. The blinds were drawn, window open. Clock stopped at 10.37. It might be indicative of something, and it might not. Any questions? You like to make telephone calls. Now, I got a record here of some of your calls. Now, they're kind of, kind of spicy, huh? Now, take a look at this. Would you say that was one of your better calls? Right, Herbie? 
We understand you have a tendency to knock girls around a little when you've had a few drinks. You worked with Joanne Marcus in summer stock. No thanks for cooperating. That'll be all. I began the largest manhunt in New York's history. An investigation of everyone who knew the murdered girls. The chief source of reference, Joanne Marcus's address book. The number of names it contained, 565. Oh yeah, quite a spectacle. All those red-blooded American boys out there, trying to get ahead, just like me. In the Brownsville area of Brooklyn, far from the middle-class protected community which Joanne Marcus and Kathy Nelson died, Ethel Lawson came out of a bar at 3 o'clock in the morning, six months later. Go ahead, then. You find Harry. Well, I'll do, baby, later. After the death of Ethel Lawson, yeah. and a few blocks away, another unrelated incident happened. Hold it. I think I got something going down. Get away from me. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, freeze! Stop or I'll shoot! How much you weigh? Uh, stocky. Stocky. 160, 165? Yes. I got something from him. I got a bottle from his coat. The next morning, patrolman Stabil looked for suspects.
Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm trying to keep warm. Come out here. Did you catch that guy last night? Uh, what guy? The guy where you were shooting at. What do you know about that? I was walking down the ambush to leave my aunt's house. And 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 this guy came running around the corner. He, he said, he, he, he said, hide me, hide me. I said, man, I can't hide you. He take off somewhere. Which way did he go? I think he went down that way. He went down picking. Think you recognize this guy if you saw him again? I don't know, man. It was kind of dark. Tell you what, you and I take a little walk. Come on. Come on, come on. What do you do? Try to rape a woman. Wait here, homie. Post 16. Yeah, I got a witness here that I tapped the raid. Hey kid, what's your name? My name is Louis Humes. How do you spell that? H-U-M-E-S. Louis Humes. H-U-M-E-S. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is my brother. What's your name? Abe. Trying to find a job. Where are you going now? The door was all coming. What's that address? It's on Pitkin. Okay. So, where'd you get this up into now? I ain't doing it. I just seen this guy running. They was chasing, that's all. So, what are you supposed to be? Some kind of reporter or something? Didn't I tell you? You can't say nothing. You get into trouble. But I ain't scared. I ain't doing nothing. So, how often you gotta do something to get in trouble? What are you, some kind of doofus or something? I told you. You don't say nothing because you don't see nothing. You don't know nothing. Did you remember to bring in your social security card and stuff? I lost it. You lost your social security card? You are unbelievable. You're a pinhead. How you gonna, how you gonna give me food? I'm not gonna pay for any food. That's that, that's it. And what are you walking behind? Just go home. Go home. Who is he? Suspect 985. Used to date Joanne Marcus. Someone saw him arguing with her outside of her apartment. His name is Ryan McNally, age 24, freelance writer. He was in Washington, D.C. at the time of the homicide. I'm sorry. I should have checked the files more carefully. That's what happens when half of the police force is on one case. They have a tendency to fall all over each other. You want some coffee? Hey, you want some coffee? I'll catch you later. Ruthie? Ruthie! You don't remember me, do you? I remember you. Oh, everything is so expensive. I got out of the market. I can't believe my bill. This is as good as top round. I didn't know you lived around here. Where's, uh, Jack? Isn't that the name of the guy you married? It's over. Oh, welcome to the club. <laughs> well, what were you running away for? I got fat. <laughs> You're not fat. Oh, wait, try Try this. Doesn't have no big brand name on it, but it's just as good. 
Hey, you're really up on all these things, aren't you? I'm a great you? cook. You're a great cook? Mm-hmm. How about me cooking up some chili? I make a great chili. What's the use of going back? We had something nice. Let's leave it alone. There aren't so many things back to remember. You're someone I remember. Hey, uptown. How's the Marcus Nelson case coming? Hey, Dan. How are things in Manhattan? They're as good as they think they are. They come up with anything yet? No. Oh, they ought to. They've been on it long enough. I should not visit once in a while. Hot shot. <laughs> hey, Al. Yeah? The attempt to rape of the Puerto Rican woman. Now, it's only the Lawson murder. Same vicinity, Pitkin Avenue. Same M.O. Now, didn't that occur to you? No. What about this kid? The one who saw it. Now, what's he like? I didn't even give him a toss. Just a stupid kid. All right, this stupid kid. What's his address? Says he works at the Derwin Salt Company. You want to do me a favor? Hey, Bishop, and check it out now. Okay, okay. The fellow told the police officer yesterday that you seen a man running from the police? Yeah, I'm the one. I see your identification. I don't think I got none. You got anything with your name on it? I got a couple of letters, I think. All right, let's see this. Lewis Hughes? Why'd you say you worked at the Derwin Salt Company? I was going to, but I, I, I lost my social security card. Uh-huh. Well, uh, maybe you can help us. Sure. Will you come with us down to the station? Atta boy. Okay, let's go. Uh, okay, Lewis, you just have a seat over here, all right? That's it. Right down there. Uh, Sergeant. Hey, if anybody's going out for coffee, I'll take a regular. somebody who wants you to see. Who? Oh, don't worry about that. Just step right in here, okay? Uh, who? Don't worry about it. Right there. That's it. You believe that? <laughs> well, I want you to do me a favor, okay? I'll just stand right here. Huh? Right here. That's it. Right there, Lewis. Well, is that him? I like to hear him saying something. Wrong. Just say the words, okay? What for? Just say it. What's wrong? Just say the words. My 
I'm saying all this. Just do me the favor, Louis, please. Lady, I'm going to rape you. Lady, I'm going to kill you. That's good. A little louder. Lady, I'm going to rape you. Lady, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> This is not right. Take it easy. Don't worry. Here, here, here. Sit down. Sit down over here, okay? Come on. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay? Sit down. It's all right. It's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Alvarez, please. This lady says you tried to rape her. What? I don't even know her. Hey, hey, hey lady, you, you make a mistake. Lady, I ain't do nothing to you. Get Mrs. Alvarez some coffee, will ya? Okay, Matt. Come on, Mrs. Alvarez. We're going downstairs, okay? Louis Humes, you're under arrest for attempted rape. Put your hands on the wall. For what? Come on, boy. But how could she say it was me? Well, that's the ticket. But if uh, I wasn't... You're loaded. All right, Louis. Let's go. Come on. Ask the boy. It wasn't like it was before, was it? Better. <sighs> there always was a streak of old-fashioned gallantry about you. What have you been doing with yourself, Ruthie? I'm a nurse. A nurse? Oh. I had to... I had to do something. You know, after the divorce. Good for you. What about you? You still a cop? Oh, yeah. You can't kick it, huh? Mm -hmm. Why not? I don't know. I thought at first I was doing it to support the wife, put the braces on the kid's teeth, and now the braces are gone, <laughs> so is the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Habit, maybe? Or maybe there's more to it. I don't know. That's the one thing about you I could never get with. Hmm. I don't like most cops I know either. But who else would put their lives on the line at these prices? I think you're wasting yourself. I don't know if I ever had more to offer in the first place. Cigarette? Nope, I gave up smoking. Yes. You call Grossman to come over and get this confession? Uh-huh, I'm on it right now. Watch out. They got the attempted rape and the loss and murder on Pitkin Avenue. And don't forget to make a list of all this, huh? Okay. Hey, where are you going? I gotta make a list of that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back home. You want to talk to him? Who? Oh. Your suspect. The suspect? Come on, now we got it all. The Lawson thing, too. I want to talk to him. There's nothing to talk about. Come mm -hmm. on. Come on. Come on. Lewis. This is Detective Corrigan. And he wants to ask you a few questions. You've been telling us the truth so far, so just keep telling us the truth. It's bad enough. Whose picture is it? My. The girls. Where are they from? They're from Jersey. Jersey? Where in Jersey? They said they want to ranch and they raise ones. What are their names? 
when I'm his name, Louise. I can't hear you. I said when I'm his name, Louise. What's the other one's name? I remember. Just tell a man what he wants to know, Louis. Just tell him the truth. They ought to check it out anyway. They won't be able to help. Come on, come on, come on, Louis. Enough. When I was in my class in school. What does a girl like that want to give you her picture for? I found it in a dump around my house. <gasps> and I kept it. You want us to believe that? Why'd you keep it? Tell him the truth, Louis. Because I liked it. Because you what? You what? I liked it. I always liked her. I, I just want to pretend that, that I knew her. I, I used to show the picture to people, just made like that I knew her. Tell me, Lewis. Recognize these knives? No. No. How did you come in the room? To the open door. What did you do? I ran the kitchen. And at 2.30 the following morning... What did you do in the kitchen? Assistant District Attorney for Manhattan, Mr. Michael Cabot, arrived, accompanied by Manhattan Detectives Tanner and Green. They took down his confession from Lewis Humes. She came in. What was she wearing? She didn't have a number to tell. What did she have from the waist up? Nothing. Did you or she say anything then? That's when she started screaming and hollering. What did you do after she started to scream? I, I ran over and grabbed hold of her and I, I told her to shut up. How did you grab her? I, I grabbed her around the back, grabbed her by the neck. What happened in there after you dropped her into the bedroom? I hit her with the bottle. What did you do after you hit her on the head with the bottle and the bottle broke? I, I tied her up. How did you tie her up? With the sheets here covering the body. What happened then? That's when her, her mother came in. Why do you say it was her mother? Well, that's what I understand, it was her mother. What did you do then? I, 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 I got up and I, I told her to be quiet. She started screaming and hollering, and, and then I ran over. And over to her? And I grabbed her. What did you do then? I, I started to have intercourse with her. You started to have what? I say, I, I start to. That's before she come to. What happened when she came to? She, she started screaming and hollering again. What did you do then? Ran in the kitchen. Why did you run into the kitchen? I was trying to find a knife. What did you do? I, I start cutting and swinging at her. Why did you do that? Satisfaction. Satisfaction? For what? I know. I, I, I was angry. Then I, I, I ran the bathroom. Why did you run into the bathroom? And wa washed the blood off, off my hands. Did you go back into the bedroom? Before I, I left the bedroom, I pulled the shades down. Why did you pull down the shades? Because if, if they came to, they would get up. The two girls you cut? Huh? And then the, the people in the next apartment might see them tied up. Okay, 
Good evening, Inspector. Inspector Hofstetter, one of the heads of Brooklyn law enforcement, arrived later that evening. How the hell am I supposed to know? Oh, oh Inspector. What have you got? A picture in his wallet of Joanna Marks. What else? Confession. How much of a confession? 61 pages. Inspector, all right? Inspector. Fine. What else? Well, we have a diagram of the Marcus Nelson apartment. Sooner. How'd the woman do? She died. Did it bother you? No. I was coming for a long time. Hey, you know, those drapes I was making, I brought them. Or am I trying to domesticate you too much? Oh. That question is a little too weighty for this hour. Yeah? Brownsville. Right away. What is it? That Marcus Nelson thing. You have to go up now? Well, either I gotta give up the force, or you gotta give up nursing. Maybe we're too far down the road to give up anything for each other. You want me to wait for you here? I'll call you at your place later. our brains out, tracked down every clue for eight months. And those Brooklyn Hicks, they stumble on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Inspector. Uh, where is he? Right this way. New Year's Eve. Well, they got something to celebrate. Uh, Tell us once more how you took the knives from the drawer. Oh, Frank. The Inspector. I look into the drawer. The kitchen table drawer? Yes. There were knives in there? Yes. How many knives did you grab? I got about three. Which one did you use? Which knife? Down from the color of the table in the dining room to the number of knives he picked up. Talks about it like he was talking about taking a drink of water. Are you surprised by anything now, Frank? <laughs> Not much. What's your name? Corrigan, sir. Good work, officer. Thanks. That's a copy of his confession? Yes. Can you give it to the lieutenant? I'd like to talk to him myself. Give me your 
Now, wait a minute. Lewis Hughes took the subway over to Manhattan. And he wandered haphazardly into the Marcus Nelson. If I change my name to something Irish, you know, I can love What's he got inside their apartment? He picked up an empty bottle. Good to see you. We don't see you anymore, you know that? Who girls? I mean, you're in the Marcus. Of course, I've been working long enough. I need a vacation. Work. You call that one? Cargans. There's some things in this I want to go over with you. Things all here. Well, there are a few things a little vague. It doesn't say how he got into the building. Well, maybe he got into that service door. Well, I tried it myself. It locks automatically. Maybe it doesn't work that well all the time. All right, maybe. How about the blood? He went into the uh, bathroom, washed his hands. Oh, I mean the clothes. I mean, he had to have it all over him. Did he tell you he changed someplace? No. You sure this is Joanne Marcus? Come on. What do you think? Uh, blonde. Kid, you want to say anything to me? No, I don't want to say anything to you. Hello, Miss Carr. I'm sorry to bust oh, in on you this hi, hour of the Ted. morning. And that's all right. Come on in. Thank you. What is it? Well, they picked up somebody in Brooklyn. Got a picture in his wallet? I think it may be the guy we're looking for. Tell me, could this be a picture of Joanne Marcus? That's so old and faded. Take your time. No, that's not her. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Melissa Carr will not identify the photograph. That doesn't mean that he didn't find it in their apartment. charges against you are pretty serious. What? What is it, charges? Do you swear that you, officer, arrested Lewis Humes on a charge of homicide in that the defendant here in Mansion did stab and cut with a knife about the throat, neck, and body of two females, one Joanne Marcus and Kathy Nelson, that resulted in death of the aforesaid? I swear. Those Humes, <clears throat> you have a lawyer? I can't hear you. I don't think he can afford a lawyer, Your Honor. Let him speak for himself.
Is there a lawyer in the court now? Uh, yes, Judge. Mr. Morris Fisher. Mr. Morris Fisher, will you make your presence known to the court? Right here, sir. Mr. Fisher, do you want to assist this court? Yes, sir. Officer, you take the defendant over to the table there so he can consult with counsel. Thank you. Lewis, Lewis. Uh, did you hear the charges that they have against you, huh? They ain't true. They're true. You confess to them. They made me. Oh, what do you mean they made they you? They made me. How? They beat me up and they, they scared me. <laughs> Lewis. Lewis, they have 60 pages right here in your own words. Man, I, I ain't do nothing. <clears throat> Is that what you want me to tell them? You sure? Okay. Um, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, it seems that I'm the first person uh, the defendants had the opportunity to discuss this with, uh, not including the police officials. The defendant now states that the confessions pertaining to all three crimes were made under duress and threats. If Your Honor, please, I think the officers should be commended in this matter. I mean, I know that this man has been wanted for quite some time for these murders. And I think a lot of people are going to rest a lot easier now that he's been apprehended. Your Honor, the court pleads. Uh, excuse me, counsel. Without saying or implying any innocence or guilt in this matter, the people of this town are pleased with the arrest for murder in this case, in which they've been very much concerned. I think the police department uh, does a fine, effective job. They do it efficiently. They do it properly. This court uh, commends the police department of the city of New York. And the people of this town are going to have much more respect and confidence in law enforcement now rather than two or three days ago in relationship to these two major crimes. Officer, bring the defendant to the bar. <laughs> Lewis Humes, I order you to be held without bail until it is determined by a grand jury whether you should be indicted, and if so, on what charges. <laughs> Hey, Mark, hey, you Dan. see that? You know, I've been calling about it all morning. Huh? How about this? Public protector that, huh? award given to Brownsville Detective Lieutenant First Grade Dan Carrigan. Huh? That's not fair, you know. You guys deserve that with me. Right. Move at 11 o'clock. No. You can see how much he loves the force. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't even get him to go away on a vacation. Yeah, and he deserves one. Congratulations again, Dan. For what? Having such a beautiful wife? Oh, I made mean it, you know. You get more beautiful every day. Hey, look who's here. How are you guys taking this up in Manhattan? Help survive. <laughs> hey, Danny, can I talk to you a minute before you go? You're on a vacation here. Look, I've been going over that confession. There's a few things in it that... You want to know what the inspector said? There are more details in that confession than any case that he can remember. Why do you call that Nelson girl the mother? Talk to the inspector. Let's go, Marge. Sit down. I ain't talking to nobody. I said sit down. Did a lot of talking to them, and now you're going to do a lot of talking to me. What are you here for? I'm a cop. 
And you say that cops are trying to lynch you. Well, I'm not a lyncher, and neither are they. Maybe they was just, just trying to make points. That's a lie, and you know it. Well? Why should I want to talk to you? I already did enough talking. Makes me believe you. Makes me believe you're not telling a lie. How can I do that? Tell me what they said. Exactly what they said. And then I'll know if you're telling a lie, and I'll know if you're telling the truth. First they get you in there, then they threw me names. under... What? Names. I gotta have names. The young cop. Mr. Uh, Beale? And Black, the tough one, he scares you. Now, what'd he say? I gotta have the words. All right, Lewis. Are you ready to tell us the truth? I have been telling the truth. You've been lying. Now we know you tried to rape that woman. Stand up. Face the chair. <laughs> okay. Did you try to rape that woman? No, I, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Take it easy. Don't hit me no more. Look at me. Look at me. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. You were looking for some white stuff. You were following around. Uh, no. You saw that Puerto Rican woman? No, I've I, I never seen her before. You followed her no, in No, I there. wasn't, no. You grabbed her around the neck. You pushed her into the alley. They haven't been for Al here. You'd have raped her. That's the truth, isn't it? Believe me, this is your last chance. Tell me the truth. I've I, I never seen it before. I've never seen it before. Tell me the truth, Lewis! I didn't do nothing. That's what you say. Now I'll tell you what they say. Cigarette? Thanks. I, I, I know I need help. Can you help me? Now, Lewis, you have to ask a lawyer no, or a judge for that kind of help. You've been as nice as my own father. You've been nicer than my own father. If I don't tell you the truth, you'll find out anyway, right? You don't have to tell us anything. But if you do talk to us, we want the truth, nothing else, okay? It's a lie. They say they never even raised their voices to you. They're going to testify to that. It's a lie. Words, names. Tell me everything you remember. The old one. Jackarino? <laughs> Jackarino. He says, don't y'all touch this boy. I, I won't stand for it. He, he pretends like, like he's your friend. He pretends to be better than your own father. I know. Must seem like the end of the world to you. But it isn't necessarily. Louis, what are you doing out of the time of night? I ain't had no place to sleep. You ain't had no place to sleep. Oh. My mother come for see you, and my father and her split up. We all came with her. She, she, she went back. She, she thought I'd be all right, because I got a job. But I, I, I lost it. Where did you sleep? I, I slept in the hallway. Why don't you call your parents? That's what parents mm. are supposed to be for. Mm. I, I, I didn't want to call, because my dad and I don't get along too good. You seem like a hard guy to get along with me. Mm. Is it bad for me? I don't know yet, Lewis. Let's put our heads together. And the questions are going to come fast. Well, if you have the button to your coat. The button from the coat ain't mine. I lost mine a long time ago. How'd you lose it? I don't know. Woman claims she saw you. A few of them. 
Which would you believe? You? Her? He said, nobody would believe me. So he finds out everything about you, your, your dreams. Then he used it against me. You want to trust somebody. What are you going to do when you get out of this, Lewis? You think I will? I'm going to do everything I can to help. What are you going to do with your life? I want to go in the Navy. Why the Navy? Well, you get educated there better than anywhere else. What do you want to do later? Don't laugh. I'm not laughing. Who's laughing? I want to be an artist. 61 pages of confession. After a while, you just break down and shake your head. You figure you ain't gonna ever get out of there unless you do. You confessed to the murders of three women. I didn't know what I was confessing to. The first time I knew it was murder was when I was with you in the courtroom. He fooled me. He fooled you? Just a few more questions, Louis. Lewis, just a little more. Lewis, come on. Get the head up, Lewis. Just a little more, we'll all be through. What happened? I ain't gonna answer till I find out what happened to them girls. What? Them girls that we're talking about in the apartment. Uh, is they all right now or what? What's the matter, Lewis? What is it? Are you worried about the girls? Is that it? Look, I'm going to give him a call. Okay? Oh, was them girls cut bad? Have a cigarette, Louie. How many of those things you been smoking, Louis? I don't know. You ought to cut down. Stuff is poison. Here. No sandwich. Uh, I, I don't want nothing else to eat. I already had too much food. Well, I talked to them. They're not mad at you. And none of the others said anything about that phone call? No. Drew a diagram of the murder girls are popping. This is the diagram. Which part did they help you with? What's the matter? Something wrong with your eyes? I can't see too good. Where are your glasses? I, I ain't got none. I, I never had the money to get them with. Excuse me, Lieutenant. They got his mother out there. All right, send her in. Right. Ma? Ma? What happened to you? They picked me up, Ma. <laughs> they made me confess to them crimes. Are you going to stay here? Or are you going to go back to see you? Of course I'm going to stay here with you. I was alone, Ma. <laughs> I was the only colored person there. confession all morning. It seems to be all right. Is there any doubt in your mind that it is all right? Hey, look, Danny, I asked you once. Let me ask you again. Why did the kid call Kathy the mother? Ask him, not me. Sit down. Sit. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. Why did he say he pulled down the shades in the apartment so that if they came to, no one would see them? He cut them the ribbons. He must have known that they weren't coming to. Mr. Goodman... I don't know why he said that. The diagram of the apartment, did he draw it all? His initials are all over it. Uh, two different pens did it. What are you suggesting? Oh, I drew on, the diagram myself? This, uh, photograph. 
No, no one will identify it as Joanne Marcus. I told him. It doesn't mean he couldn't find it in the apartment. Oh, it could be a picture of somebody else, but he still may have found it in the apartment. Well, how do you know he wasn't telling the truth when he said he found the picture in Seaview? I know when they're lying, their stomachs move in and out. Whose stomachs? Come on. Whose stomachs? Look, I know him. I worked in Brownsville for a long time. Is there anything else? No, no, that's all for now. Well, if there is anything else, would you please contact the DA's office in Brooklyn? I'm working on a new case for them. They don't want me off a job. See ya. Can there really be something wrong with this? <laughs> what do you think? It's not only him. It's the Brooklyn Police Department, the Manhattan Police Department, the Brooklyn DA's office, your department, my department. Well, what are you going to do about it? What can we do about it? Take the photograph. Now, Corrigan says that Hume got it from the apartment. And Hume says he got it in Seaview. Can I take this? Yeah. Why don't we find out who's telling the truth? What's that? What? Up there. You mean right-hand corner? No, no, no. Right here. I don't know. It's like a sandy stretch, a broad pathway. Could even be a river. This doesn't look like the place at all. Hey, you said that photo was 10 years old. These trees have grown up a lot since then. What's this uh, stretch of something here? There used to be a lake here. Vegetation's covered it over. Thank you, officer. Come on, let's Thanks get to a, a police station. Yeah. You know, that looks a lot like Travis's daughter. Travis? Yeah, he used to be mayor. He owns a service station. About three blocks down, turn left, it's right on the corner. Thank you. Sure thing. He'll be back after lunch. About a half hour? Yeah. Let me see that again. That doesn't look like Elaine. You know who this looks like? This looks like Len Pizer. Where does she live? Right around the corner. Got about a half hour. Thanks. Where did you get this picture? Is this your picture? Yeah, we took it right after graduation. Big deals. <laughs> uh, some of us went up to Mount Jersey Woods. Oh, excuse all this mess. We're waiting for well, the that's movers. That's all right. Now, Ms. Pizer, this is very important. What happened to that picture? Oh, I don't know. It was bouncing around the house. My mother threw it away. When was that? Um, spring cleaning. May, June. All right. Well? They won't drop the indictment. Say they don't have enough. You don't think I like it, do you? The whole thing started with the picture. Well, it isn't the girl's picture. What are they going to do? Well, we'll proceed slowly. We'll investigate everything. We don't want to make any statements at this time because uh, we don't want to embarrass Brooklyn. Embarrass Brooklyn? Well, if Brooklyn could be embarrassed, they would have dropped dead years ago. Anybody talk to Brooklyn? Yeah. And what they say? They said they weren't interested in hearing any fairy tales. Fairy tales, huh? Too many promotions and citations are involved. That's the ball game. Brooklyn law enforcement is on trial, isn't it? That's what they mean. Theo, we can't delay the legalities on this case. Besides, you don't even have enough to... Yeah. The people from the press are here, sir. Cinnamon. And there are more developments. You let us know. Why the earth shaking urgency about this case? What's the damn hurry about this case? Nothing. Nothing at all. 
Just that I happen to care about law and order and I happen to care about what's happening in our country. That's all. Hi, Theo. Hey, Theo, what are you doing down here? Something wrong with the case against you? Wrong? Why should anything be wrong? Well, I don't know. Uh, come on, Mario. Why hasn't Manhattan moved on the indictment against you? Yeah, it's been a while, Mario. We are not responsible for what goes on in Manhattan. We know what we're doing here. What are you doing, Mario? What are we doing? I'll tell you what we're doing. We are going to try Lewis Humes for the attempted rape of Rita Alvarez within the next two weeks. Well, that's news. You can quote me on that. That's what I'm doing, Mario. The Marcus Nelson murders were committed first, Mario. Don't you have to try him for that first? Teams, what, what are you telling me my job? I told you, we are not responsible for what they do in Manhattan. We are responsible for Brooklyn. It reminds me of the Sacco Vanzetti case. Why is that? Sacco Vanzetti? You got the nerve to compare this with the Sacco Vanzetti case? Yeah. My parents fought for Sacco Vanzetti. How does this compare with Sacco Vanzetti? Yeah, you tell me. Well, they first tried them on a minor charge, too. It helped both cases. No comparison. What do you mean? Wait a minute, Mario. What do you mean? Well, you have a famous case. You try a man on a lesser charge. The jury has already figured him guilty in their minds because they know he's going to be tried for something terrible. The kid is guilty. Now, Mario, Mario, you know the score. Yeah, I do know the score. Now, once he's had a conviction, the jury at the next trial hangs him too because they figure he's guilty of something. Huh. He's already been convicted. Well, They've I got him coming and going. Mrs. Humes, I am seeing you because of my friendship with Mr. Seligman here, who used to work with me. I've been reading about your son's case in the papers, like everybody else. He has a lawyer, hasn't he? Uh, the court gave him one. He, he don't have a child experience. The woman he is supposed to have attempted to rape identified him. They've got a confession. Oh, please. They even found a picture of the murdered girl in his wallet. He's innocent. Even if he is, the truth doesn't count for much in a courtroom. Jake. I'm sorry, Saul. I'm sorry, but I believe in telling the truth in these matters. It's like being a surgeon. A patient has cancer, you tell him. I believe in that. They've got enough to convict your son ten times. They said you saved me. I can't save your son. The publicity, the confession, the whole atmosphere makes it impossible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Goodbye. Nice woman, Saul. She managed to say goodbye, even though I told her I couldn't save her son. Now, you get out of here. If you ever bring anybody in here again and make them false promises for me, I'll kill you. Lewis, how are you? How are you feeling? Sit down. Listen, I'm going to recommend something to you. I made a deal with the judge. I'll give you life. Life? You better face it, Lewis. You have two homicides in Manhattan, one attempted rape and a homicide here. It's a good deal, Lewis. A go How is it going to be a good deal when I'm going to be spending the rest of my life in, in, in jail for something I ain't even do? Lewis, listen, what kind of chance do you think you have? It is your word against the Manhattan and the Brooklyn Police Departments. No. No more deal. He said, let me touch you. And then he put his hand under my coat and under my uniform. And he said he wanted to have intercourse with me. What was his exact language? I want to have sexual relations. I'm going to rape you. Then I got hold of his hands and then of his coat. And I started screaming. You recognize this coat? That looks like the coat the man was wearing that night. The man that was following me and that attacked me. And this button? This is the button you took from the coat of the man who followed you and attacked you? Yes. <laughs> you? Now, Mrs. Alvarez, do you see the man in this court the man who followed you and attacked you that time? <coughs> yes. 
Think you could stand down and walk over and tap him on the shoulder? <coughs> Let the record show that Mrs. Alvarez tapped the defendant on the shoulder. No further questions. <coughs> Detective Black, how many years have you been on the force? Eleven. Have you ever received any uh, citations for bravery? I have. How many? <coughs> Nineteen. Nineteen. Have you ever subjected a defendant at any time to duress or threats? No. Have you ever subjected any suspect at any time to duress or threats? Never. Well, then how did you get the confession out of the defendant? On a pad like this, yeah. in his own words. He cooperated completely. Absolutely, completely. Thank you. No further questions. Detective Jacarino, when you came into the precinct, did you see any evidence that the uh, defendant had been beaten or coerced into a confession? No. Did you see any bruises on his face or on his body? No. Can you speak up, please? Very difficult. No. Thank you. Detective, did you personally speak with Lewis Humes the day that he arrived at the precinct? Yes. What did you two talk about? We had a casual conversation. What was it about? Well, we talked about his background. I asked if he'd been working. He said yes, but he hadn't worked steadily. He tell you why? He said he had problems. Problems? What kind of problems? People. He had problems with people. Problems with people. Did he tell you anything else about his job? Uh, he said he sometimes got into arguments and that he quit his job or be dismissed by his employer. Uh -huh. Did he ever discuss with you at any time anything regarding the attempted rape? Yes. Well, he must have said more than that, Detective. Could you elaborate for the court? He said that he put his, his hand under her dress and said, shut up or I'll kill you. That's sufficient for me, Your Honor. They stood me in front of the chair. And they called me a liar. I told them if... If I said I did it, that... Your Honor, could you please instruct the defendant to speak up? I cannot hear a word he's saying. Would you please? I, mean, I, I told him that... that if I said I, I, I did it, that I'd be lying. So every time I said I didn't do it, I got knocked back down the chair. Then they stood me up on the side of the wall. They kept beating me and beating me. I, I, I just couldn't take no more, so I just shook my head. Detective Black beat him. Patrolman Stabile beat him. Detective Jacarino lied to him. Now, if you want to believe all of that, and if you want to believe that as a result of that, detectives are the finest police force in the world. They just go out and they beat up anybody just to get confessions out of them. Well, in this society, he's in a very sad state indeed. But that is what you've got to believe to believe Lewis Hume's story. Either Lewis Hume's is... Either Lewis Humes has lied or uh, these police officers have lied. Very nice likeness, Lewis. <coughs> Detective Black, 19 citations for bravery. Detective Jack Arino, Detective Corrigan. They have all conspired to pick out Lewis Humes out of all the people in the whole world. So either Lewis Humes is lying or well, they are all conspirators. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it true that we have nailed Lewis Humes on the button? <laughs> I'll say you as to the first count of the indictment, accusing the defendant of attempted rape in the first degree. Guilty. I'll say you as to the second count of the indictment, Charging the defendant with assault in the second degree. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Will the defendant stand? 
The defendant, having been found guilty by a jury, is now directed by this court to be committed to Kings County Hospital for mental examination to determine whether he is a perpetual sex menace. Sentence will be determined upon completion of examination. has failed to prove any connection between the button and the Lewis Hume's coat. Does Portella know about this? The report has been on this desk all week. He knew it when he made that charge to the jury. Interesting, but not surprising. Charges against Lewis Hume are phony. Which one? All of them. What about the confessions? They were kicked out of them. Didn't they? I mean, they found in his wallet a picture of the murdered girl. Picture of the girl. It was not Joanne Marcus. It was not Joanne Marcus. No. Well, he confessed to three murders and attempted rape. What is he guilty of? Nothing. Two coffees. Are you sure? I know where he was at the time of the Marcus Nelson murders. Where? 150 miles away. How do you know? I've got eyewitnesses. Reputable people. Who? People in a small hotel in Seaview who are with Humes watching Martin Luther King's speech on television. Practically every black knows where they were on that day. Thank you, Ben. Why are you doing this? I don't have to tell you what happens to a cop who leaks information. <laughs> I know. Well? I don't want to do it. I was expecting somebody else to do it. But no one is. On February 18th, another seemingly unrelated incident happened, this time in Spanish Harlem. Bob is coming. I know he's coming. He's saying things about you. You know how crazy he is. What a temper. He has to kill you. Look, I'm not going to run away from him. Roberto! Punk. Oh. You ripped me off, man! What the hell are you doing here? That stuff you sold me was no good. Get out of here, you man! Oh. But that time, hermano! Asesino! Asesino! Por qué lo mataste, mi hermano? I killed him, Mateo. I killed him, but it was in self-defense, man. He came to me first. Ah, uh, we got you this time, haven't we, Bobby? You're not a three-time loser. You're a four-time loser. It's the electric chair this time. Not necessarily. What do you mean? Got a Nelson Marcus case. Yeah? But I know who wasted them days. What do you want from us? I want to walk away from the Timoteo murder. <laughs> Come on. We already have someone on the Marcus Nelson murders. Hey, don't you read the newspapers? You have someone. But you wouldn't be seeing me unless you have your doubts, right? All right, let's hear it. It was the day of the thing. Came to my apartment. What was the man's name? I want my deal, man. I'll have to talk to my superior first. Take him away. 
right. I can walk. I ain't no cripple. I guess the life of a Puerto Rican drug pusher doesn't count for as much as the lives of two white, middle-class career girls. Because Bobby Martin, well, he got his deal. Sit down. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. Okay, full immunity on the homicide of Roberto Tomateo. No accessory after the fact in the Nelson Marcus murders? Ah, uh, you really know the law, don't you, huh? I could teach you guys a couple of things. Okay. Who is it? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. No accessory after the fact in the Marcus Nelson. Now, who is it? A guy by the name of Teddy Hopper. Who? Teddy Hopper. Teddy Hopper. You know him? Yeah, I know him. This guy's lying. He took you in too, huh? Get out of here. Go. We'll talk to you later. Hey, man. Easy on the laundry. What makes you so sure he's lying? I know Teddy. He's not capable of a thing like this. What's he like? Cat burglar? Cat burglar, that means he could have made the jump. I know him. In fact, I was the first one who busted him. No, no. Butcher and women is not his bag. Hey, Theo. <laughs> how are you, Teddy? Fine, how are you doing? Forget it. <laughs> I've been too old for this stuff. <laughs> Hey, I heard about you catching those guys who were heisting the cameras, man. How'd you hear about that? I read in the newspaper. Teddy, been reading about Joey you all the time. Didn't go out man. Again, did he? Oh no, he's over here in the kitchen. Uh, hey, you remember Joey, don't you? Come here, Joey. Over here. Say hello to the nice job. Say hi. He's a nice job. Hi. Uh, hi, Joey. Look, Teddy, I gotta speak to you alone. You don't mind, do you, Joey? No. Thanks. Hey, Joey, come here. Come on, let's go. Ask me the other one. Oh, Teddy, I always build me landing. Oh, come on, come on, go. What? Uh. See? Very good. Well, what have you been doing with yourself, Teddy? Well, I've been working as a lathe operator. It really keeps me busy, too. You know what they call me down there? <laughs> Is he cockroach? <laughs> I got something to ask you, Teddy. Where were you last August? Last August? Why? Where were you? Well, at the beginning or the end? August 28th. August 28th, last year. Oh, yeah, that was my vacation week, man. Um, Monday, I went to Orchard Beach to get some sun. And the weather was really lousy. And uh, Tuesday, I went to visit the old lady, and she asked me to help her, uh, you know, clean up an apartment building where she works as a super. Any other people see you there? Sure. Hey, man, what is it? What, what do you want? I can't tell you now, Teddy. Get your coat. Joey, we'll go downtown. would you please do what I tell you? Just one. Oh, Josie. Teddy, what is it? Well, oh, you remember Lieutenant Kojak? No. How are you? What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Nothing's going on. Everything is going to be fine. Why is he here? It's fine. Teddy, would you Everything please tell right. me why you're here? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right? Get your coat, Teddy. Hey, Bobby, man. What's happening? I told him, Teddy. You told him? You told him what, man? About the girls. About the girls? What girls? Marcus Nelson. Marcus Nelson? There's no use, man. I told him the whole thing. How you Marcus came Nelson? to my apartment. Hey. The blood on your clothes. Everything you say. Hey, man, are you kidding me? 
You putting us all on? Marcus Nelson. Hey, don't be taken in by that baby face and that curly blonde hair. He iced him. He carved him up. Hey, man. You must be in bad trouble. Hmm. All right, wait outside. Believe you, man. Sit down. You talk to the DAs. Now you're gonna talk to me. See, so you're a murderer. You're a pimp. You're a pusher. You put your old lady out of habit. A red light over her head. You showed Teddy how to use the needle. And then you turned him in to save your own sweet hide. Know all the details of the murders? Which means if it wasn't Teddy, it was you. So now you tell me again. You came to your place, right? You saw blood on his T-shirt? Yes. Blood on his trousers? Yes. Above the knees, below the knees? Above the knees. You had a brown shopping bag? Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. You're so polite. You make me sick. Now, what was in the shopping bag? Two white handkerchiefs. Why handkerchiefs? I think he took them to wipe the blood off his clothes. There was blood on them. What else was in the shopping bag? Pink rubber gloves. Pink rubber gloves? Yes. Yeah, he always used them so there wouldn't be no fingerprints. How to get into the building? To the basement. And how to get out? The same way. How to get into the apartment? Through the window. Stand up. The service window? Yes. Yeah. That's one hell of a jump. Teddy makes those kinds of jumps. Anything else he tell you you remember? Yeah. He said the smell of blood almost made him throw up. <laughs> Josie? Yes? I'm gonna be all right. Oh, Teddy. <laughs> you took too many this time. <laughs> you took too many. Hey, Theo. How you doing? Hi, Teddy. They thought you weren't going to make it for a while. It's only life, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in uh, prison so often, I thought you'd uh, want to do a little more with it. Grandma Kojak, what are you doing here? <laughs> you come to hassle me too, Theo? No. We were supposed to take a lie detector test tomorrow. Your overdose had nothing to do with it, did it? Hey, man, I'm not going to take any lie detector test. I mean, you remember what happened to Lewis Humes? Well, the same exact thing could happen to me, man, except it could be worse. I mean, I've been in and out of jail since I was 17. <laughs> You ought to know, man. You were the first one that busted me. I don't trust them. You know, the only cop in the world I trust is you, man. You did it, didn't you, Teddy? Are you kidding? No, I didn't, man. Hey, where's Josie? Um, she was exhausted. She was here for three days, made sure you were all right. Then I persuaded her to go home. Will you tell her to come back? 
Quite a girl, isn't she? Yeah, you don't know how she's taking care of me. I mean, you don't know how lucky I am. Without her, I'd have been a corpse a long time ago. All right, I'll call her. This isn't going to get in the papers, is it? I mean, my mother's sick, you know, and I wouldn't want her to know about it. No one knows about it but me. Hey, Thea? I didn't do it. I swear to you on my mother's life, I didn't. Hey, man, I had to make a deal. I had to save myself, you understand? Hey, man, I wouldn't have gone through with it, man. I would have made them look like fools if we'd gone to court. Hey, Teddy. Hey, man, you don't really believe that I would turn in a brother, do you? I had to make a deal, you understand? Child, time to think. What's going on in here? I don't know, man. That's something about a bomb in the building. All right, come on. Back it up. Come on, boys. Back it up. Come on, back it up. Come on, back it up. right here in this apartment, or is it a nice, fat, juicy bug, huh? Nice, fat, juicy bug? What are you talking Shh. about? Well, my old friend Theo really wants to find out about me, doesn't he? Dig. Oh, wow, Dave. In one of the most unprecedented procedures in courtroom history, Jake Winehouse asked for a mistrial in the Alvarez case due to the prejudice and misconduct of the jurors for showing prejudice in the case against Lewis Humes. In effect, he brought the jurors to trial. Mr. Sack, you were a juror in the attempted rape case against Lewis Humes, were you not? Yes, sir. Did you hear a remark made by another juror during the trial? Yes, uh, this, this is the remark. These kinds are all the same. They have got the habit. These fellows like their sex. Did you hear other comments from another juror? Yes, sir. Uh, one of them said, it doesn't make any difference because if they don't get him here, they'll get him in Manhattan. Thank you, Mr. Sack. That'll be all. I'd like to call Mario Portello to the stand, please. Mario Portello, please. <laughs> Mr. Portello, you have been a prosecutor for the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office for how long? Twelve years. And during those twelve years, you have prosecuted how many cases? I don't know how many cases I've brought. Hundreds, maybe. I don't know. Hundreds. You believe in fair play, don't you? Of course I believe in fair play. I believe in justice, too, and I believe that the police department... Mr. Portello, you were the, the prosecutor in the case hearts. of People versus Humes, were you not? I didn't hear the question. Right? Well, would you repeat it, please, Counsel? You were the prosecutor in the case of People versus Humes? I was. 
Did you receive a report from the Federal Bureau of Investigation Laboratory, which was an analysis of the coat and the button in the case? Yes. And did the report state that the button you submitted and the buttons remaining on the coat did not match in size, design, or construction? That is correct. Then how could you argue to the jury that you had nailed Lewis Humes on the button? There was other evidence. What other evidence? Testimony of Mrs. Alvarez, the findings of our own laboratory. But you received a contrary opinion from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, didn't you? That finding was not conclusive. Not conclusive. Not the con opinion of the FBI that the button did not match the thread on the coat. That is correct. And you do not think you did anything wrong in withholding this evidence from the jury and in saying that you had nailed Lewis Humes on the button? No, I do not. It is not my position to show every piece of evidence to the jury. The administration of justice must not only be above reproach, but it must also be beyond the shadow of reproach. That the district attorney's silence was not the result of guile or a desire to prejudice matters little, for its impact was the same, preventing, as it did, a trial that could, in any real sense, be termed fair. Court concludes that the conviction cannot stand. The hearing revealed that prejudice, racial bias, entered that jury room. I hereby vacate and set aside the verdict in the Alvarez case, and I grant a new trial. I'll tell you the truth, Jake, I didn't know you had this flair for publicity. What did you think this was about? I certainly don't believe the finest men in our office framed Lewis Humes. No pictures, please. Jake, in all my years, I said no pictures, didn't I? In all my years of being an attorney, I never seen such a detailed confession. I mean, your client, Lewis Humes, must be some kind of genius. He can remember so many details, huh? How can Maybe he be not guilty? Helped. Maybe he was coached. Coached by who? Me? Detective Matt Black? Detective with 19 citations for bravery? Detective Lou Jacarino? Detective Dan Corrigan? Two of the finest cops on the force. Yeah, Mario, no campaign speech. What do you mean campaign right? speeches? What it's kind all of about law and order. That's what this case is about. Law and order. Law and order for a man who's poor and black. Hi, Teddy. Hello, Mom. They're coming to talk to me. They're coming here to talk to you? It's all right. I want to talk to them. I want to clear you. Mom. Hush. Don't let this beat you because I'm dying. That's why you take drugs, isn't it? No, I know. I know. Because life is too much for you. Because you can't face it. I'm sorry, Ted. How do you feel? I'm all right. I will come back when you feel it better. It's all right. I want you to question me. Miss Hopper, you work as a superintendent at 334 East 83rd Street? I wash the stairs and clean the halls. Do you know where your son was on the day of the Marcus Nelson murders? Yes. Where was he? He was at home. How do you remember so clearly? He helped me clean the halls. When did he start? I woke him about 8.30 in the morning. I had to wake him. He's a lazy bones. He likes to sleep late. How long did he stay? Until late in the afternoon. You're sure? Yes. <sighs> Miss Hopper, Teddy is your son. Would you lie to save him? No. I wouldn't. Hey, Teddy. Hey, man, I heard about your mother. Sorry, man. Hey, 
is tight, man. I need a fix. I can't get it nowhere. You want to come on with me? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Hey, man. Hey, how can you get it when nobody else can, huh? They want me to trap you. So they got me wired for sound. They give me immunity to trap you. And we can't even get arrested if we walk down the street smoking the joint. The cops is going to support our habits. It's junkie heaven, man. <laughs> You're going to have all the bombitas and the coke you ever dreamed of. <laughs> <laughs> the new trial on the Alvarez attempted rape began. The courtroom was packed. It always was for a trial that Jake Winehouse was part of. Does he look like a black-skinned Negro to you? <coughs> Will the court direct the witness to answer the question? Mrs. Alvarez, would you please answer? No. Does he look like 165 pounds? No. Does he look like 25 years old to you? Haven't I gone through enough? Hasn't Lewis Hume's gone through enough? He did it! He knows it! I know it, and God knows it! No more outbursts, please. <laughs> you yourself said that he was a stocky, 165-pound, black-skinned Negro of 25. <laughs> These are the descriptions that you yourself gave Patrolman Stabile of the man. Sit down. <laughs> By the way, uh, do you have any interest other than as a witness in this particular case? Your Honor, I object to this line. There's no relevancy in this question. Your Honor, I shall make the relevance plain in just a moment. Proceed. In other words, you have nothing to gain or lose whether the defendant is convicted or acquitted. Is that correct? Of course not. Now, do you know an attorney by the name of Nick Delias? Yeah. And do you know another lawyer by the name of Tom Flaherty? Yeah. Did you speak to them? Yeah, but only after I and appeared. in this discussion, did not the name of Lewis Humes come up? Yeah. And didn't this discussion involve the collection of a $10,000 reward offered for the conviction of anyone of the yeah. Marcus Nelson murders? But I... No more questions. Judy, Judy, come on out of that bathroom. You've been in there all morning. Brother Mac wants to get in there. I just got in here. Don't give me no lip. You've been making a home in that bathroom. You've kept up the suspense long enough. What is it? It's an article about Teddy here. Let me see that. Come on, Jenny. Come on. Figures. There's a new prime suspect in the Marcus Nelson case. Let's call him Eddie for the purpose of the story. A wan faced young dope addict. Gee. That lives with a woman twice his age. Wow, face. Let me see your face, Ed. <laughs> no, I'm so warm from this side. I look a little warm from this side, though. <laughs> see the picture of Lewis Young's here? You know they're making him look better and better looking? Right now, he's a college kid. A nice, innocent kid. Can you believe this, baby? Mm -hmm. You know, before they tried to make him look as ferocious as possible. Now they're trying to make him look sweeter. Yeah, nicely angelic. <laughs> Say, can we go to the store? And you do what to which? Go outside, go to the store. You have to go outside to go to the store, don't you? First get a warm jacket. May I go to the store is correct. May I go to the store? Please usually accompanies a question like that, don't it? Please. 
please, may I go to the store? Yes, you may. Trudy, get some rubbers. Oh, Mama. Oh, no, go on and get some rubbers. You know the cops are coming to talk to me again tomorrow? Right. Someone's gonna have to watch the kids. Well, I know who that someone is gonna be. Only I ain't gonna pay him nothing, no. Listen, Teddy. Teddy. I gotta get you to rap a little bit. You know what I mean? Huh? Come on. Cause like, uh... I don't know what they're gonna hit me with. Right? Hey. Hey, all right? Right. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Like the window. Huh? Come on, you remember the time we talked about the open window? Remember like you said... Come on. Remember you said you got in through the window? Come on, Teddy, I'm trying to help you. Hey, 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 tell him... Tell him he got in through the, uh... Service entrance door. Instead of the window. Yeah. We'll make a comical case out of this. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna have them all on the car because we're gonna of you, get them Teddy. Because of you, Teddy. <laughs> Teddy, the glasses, Paul. Teddy. I didn't tell him you got the glasses off her. Did you get the glasses off her, Teddy? You had to get the glasses off her because she wasn't wearing them when they found her, right? That's all right. Listen. <laughs> Teddy, I got some really good stuff. Come on, snort this. We're gone. Didn't your mama tell you to put on your rubbers? Oh, mama. Oh, no. Get your rubbers. Oh, mama. You heard what your mama said. All right. Hey, come here, little man. Let me button your coat. Hold still. Hey, hey. Here, hold still for a minute. Let me put this in. Don't put that right shoe off. Did you pinch my nose? Don't you know I don't allow my nose to be pinched by no nose pinching you? I'm gonna pinch your nose. Give me five. Come on. <laughs> All right, no more nose pinching you. <laughs> hey, be careful. Watch your brother cross this street. Yeah. Watch him, Trudy. The cops are after us to take that lie detector test, Teddy. You hear me, Teddy? I don't think I should take no lie detector test. You, Teddy? We don't have to take no test if we don't want to, do we? <laughs> You two take the test, right? And beat it. How are we gonna do that, Teddy? Oh, you can, man. Here's how you can do it, too. When they ask you to Teddy kill those girls, you just think to yourself that a very nervous, upset person did it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which really isn't me. I mean, you just get this in your mind that it was a very nervous, upset person that did it. I think, I think. I mean, but it isn't me, man. You know, it was a crazy man that killed those girls. So why don't you take that test, Teddy? Why don't you take the lie detector test? Hey, I could just plan it in my mind that you made this up. And that didn't happen, you know. Like, I would take the test. If I could just put that day out of my mind, man. I could just put that day out of my mind. Louis, do you see anybody in this courtroom who may have hit you or struck you? Yes. You do? Who might that be? Detective Black. Detective Black, huh? Detective Black, would you stand, please? <laughs> this is the man that hit you, Lewis? Yes. Let me sit down, Detective. 
And by the way, Lewis, did you have breakfast in the precinct that day? Yes. How long did the beating take place? I don't know. Where were you struck? All over. Exactly where were you struck? My stomach, my back, and my shoulders. What were you beaten with? Do you remember? Fists. Fists? Is that right? Yes. Closed fists, like that? Yes. How many punches would you say you received? Ten? One hundred? Fifty? What would you say? Fifty. Fifty. <clears throat> were they hard punches, Lewis? Yes. Very hard punches, Lewis? Yes. Fifty hard punches with closed fist. What about breakfast? When did you say you had breakfast? Before or after? Before or after? Before or after the beating? After. After. So they beat you with their fists 50 times, closed fists, very hard punches, and then you sat down and you had breakfast. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Louis Humes. May I have Detective Corrigan on the stand, please? Detective Corrigan, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God? I do. Detective, you have elicited many confessions, haven't you? Yes. And when you question a suspect, you don't tell him that he did something. You ask him, did he do it? Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you speak to him in a tone of voice such as you are using to us here. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Polite, calm, quiet. Correct? That's right. Where did Lewis Humes tell you that he found... Uh... This picture. Objection, Your Honor. That picture has to do with the Marcus Nelson case. We are not trying that case here. Does the prosecution suggest that the Marcus Nelson case does not affect the outcome of this case? <coughs> Your Honor, we are not trying that case right here. We are trying to decide the credibility of Detective Corrigan and the other detectives who questioned Lewis Humes, who got a confession out of him. Objection, Your Honor. Denied. So, where did Lewis Humes tell you that he found this picture? He said he found it in a dump in Seaview. But you didn't believe him when he told you that he found it in a dump in Seaview, New Jersey. Is that correct? That's right, sir. Were you looking at his stomach when he said that? <coughs> sir? Did you notice his stomach when he said that he found it in a dump in Seaview, New Jersey? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Did you notice whether his stomach was jumping in and out and up and down? <coughs> I don't know. But you did not believe him. You thought he was lying. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, Lewis Humes is a young black boy, correct? That's right. Didn't you tell Mr. Goodman and Detective Kojak that you could always tell when a black man was lying by looking at his stomach because it jumped up and down when he lied? I don't remember. You don't remember saying to Miss Goodman and Detective Kojak that? That's right. You don't remember saying it or you didn't say it? Which? I'm not saying I didn't say it. I'm saying I don't remember saying it. But you may have said it. I might have. Now, didn't you tell Lewis Humes that you talked to the two girls on the telephone and that they weren't mad at him? I might have. Did you? No, I don't remember. Did you? I said I might have. You? Might have. Yes. And if you did, that was a lie, wasn't it? Well, that depends on how you You tricked and misled Lewis Humes, didn't you? Objection, Or Your don't Honor. you think that you did anything wrong? Your Honor, will you stop this harassment of the witness, please? I do think that'll be enough. I'm sorry, Your Honor. But law and order is being used in this country as a catchphrase for stop the nigger. Officer here doesn't think he did anything wrong. People wonder why there is violence. Why there is no justice there is violence. Objection. No more questions. Well, you scored a few points. I scored nothing. You think the jury's going to take the word of a vagrant kid, black, against cops with citations for bravery, particularly when they think he sliced up two white girls in Manhattan? 
Well, it's time they knew everything about the Marcus Nelson case. I think we got one too many murderers on this baby. Sit down. What? Yeah. And this? Tell him. He brought you here to tell you that I've been working with him all along. My lawyer's name is Jerry Block. His number is 614-7402. It's all over, baby. We forget the lawyer. Tomorrow the jury comes in with a verdict on Humes. Today, you're going to tell us the truth. He needs some stuff, man. He needs it bad. You got it all, Teddy. Remember when you talked to your friends about beating the lie detector test? Remember how you said for them to think it wasn't you who did the killings? It was a very nervous and upset person? Well, we got that, too. We even got your dreams. We heard what you said when you dreamed. Oh, you don't know what you said that night, but we do. You asked God to take you. That's what you said. Give me a spoon. First things first. Come on, man. Give me a spoon. You don't get anything until we get a full confession. Yeah. Yo, we're on tape. You can't promise him anything. Let's go. Let's just... Don't throw it right out of court. I get in the next room, both of you. Realize how many people you're destroying. A five-year-old boy. Oh, come on, man. Give me Josie. a Josie. Huh? Your mother. I need a spoon. I was in the hospital when they questioned your mother. All right, come on, here. She wasn't in any condition to talk to anybody, but she wanted to give you an alibi. Right now, she's trying to explain away your actions. Daddy, you gotta give us something. We realize what pressure you've been under. Waiting all these months for the axe to fall. What tension you're under. Huh? I'm a Catholic, just like you. Last night, I went to church and I said a prayer for you. I prayed that you would make your peace with God. I don't want to make peace with God. You don't mean that. Damn right I do, man. Hey, don't give me that. I'm a dead man. Hey, what do you mean you're a dead man? If you're dead, give us something. Come on, you're the only one that can. You're the only one that can help yourself. Give us something to help you with. It's me you want to help, huh? Couldn't be you want to cover yourselves with glory, huh? Come on, I'm sick. Give me a fix, will you? you? Give us the answers now. Give me a fix. By tonight, your face will be known all over town. Your son will see it. Josie will see it. Your mother in the hospital will see it. You know what you'll hear them say? That you're some creep who ought to be locked away for the safety of some girl in an apartment or some little kid in the street. I'm sick, man! You want me to have compassion for you? Who do you have compassion for? What about Lewis Humes? He's gonna die. You don't give a damn about him. Uh, don't you understand that? I'm sick! I said I'm sick! You creep, you carved up those girls. And now you're gonna tell me. You're gonna tell me. Hey, Theo, oh, you. Easy. Come on. Let go of the Theo! Theo, what's wrong with you? Come on, man. Come on! Come on. Don't you know what you're doing? You're doing exactly what you said the guys in Brooklyn did. I have a note here from the jury. We are hopeless.
hopelessly deadlocked. What does this mean? It means we have to go to trial again. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hume. Again? Hey, hey, stay awake. How is he? He's strung out again, Senator. Can you say anything? We grilled him all night after he left the hill. He'll never crack in a million years. You better let up on him. Hey, Teddy, how are you? As well as can be expected, I guess, man. You want some coffee or something to eat? All right, some coffee. What do you got? Ham and cheese and corned beef. Give me corned beef. Known each other for a long time, huh? Well, I like you. You can't be particular who you like, I guess. I've seen a lot of guys try to make it. I never wanted anybody to make it more than you. Uh, you screwed up, kid. Hey, who won the game last night? The Yankees. Pepitone get many hits? Uh, three for four. I wanted to pull a lousy burglar in. Wound up killing two girls. What happened, Teddy? Saw the open window and I came in. You went into the above? Yeah. She was lying there? Yeah, she, uh, she pulled the sheet up around her. What happened then? I decided to have her. Yeah? I took out a knife. Then what happened? She said, don't hurt me. What'd you do then? Yeah, uh, dark-haired girl, uh, what's her name? Um, Kathy came, she stood in the door and she said, what's going on in here? I see what's going on in here. She turned and started to run towards the door. I was gonna leave the apartment, but something told me I had to kill them. I got two soda bottles and I struck both girls over the head. And then what did you do? I just kept stabbing them. I just kept stabbing them. I hit a rib in Kathy's back. Did you know Joanne before you went in that day? No. You had gloves on all the time? Yeah. Where'd you buy the gloves? Five and ten, uh, 89 and third. How much you pay for them? I don't know, man. 29, 39 cents, whatever. Where were the bodies when you left the apartment? Yeah, hey, I don't want to think about it, man. I just want to erase it out of my mind, you dig? Let's <laughs> erase it out of his mind. <laughs> I told you. If you played it straight with me, I'd help you. Now let's see your mother and Josie. What do you want me to tell them? Just, um, just tell them to forgive me, man. Teddy Hopper was indicted and held for trial in the Marcus Nelson murders. Who assumes? was freed on his own recognizance. The charges of the Marcus Nelson and the Ethel Lawson murders dropped. It was the first time he'd been out of jail in two years. <laughs> it's gonna be good to see the sky again. Oh, he's not here. Here he is now. Hold on. There's a call for you. Lewis Humes wants to invite you to a party. Hold on. 
It's your friend, Lewis. Hello, kid. How you doing? Well, you <laughs> uh, we having a party over here, and I was wondering if you could come over. Look, uh, Lewis, I'm a little busy. I wanted you to come over, because, uh, you know, like, if it hadn't been for you, man, like, I wouldn't even be walking around now. to the party. Is Louie here? Who is that? <laughs> Lieutenant Kojak. Come on in and make yourself at home. Everybody, this is Lieutenant Kojak. I told you all about him. <laughs> How are you doing? Mr. Kojak, this is my girl, Lorraine. Hi. Hi. Come on in meet Mama. <laughs> Charles, turn off that television set. I want to see Louis on the 6 o'clock news. We're not sure he's going to be on. Mm -hmm. This is Mama. Oh, and this is my oldest son, Abe. Nice to meet you. And over here is Grandpa. Hello, Ed. And this here is Sonny. Sonny? Go ahead. Well, I think it's time for the cake. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, Ted. Lewis did those drawings there. And now uh, he did these here, too. Francis, honey, will you help me with these? I did these over here. Oh, nice. I want to give you something. <laughs> I hope it's not insulting. No, no, no. She gave me a lot of hair. And I'm good looking. I made this cake. Now, y'all better enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 6 o'clock local news. No, that ain't my birthday. Don't use your hat, neither. <laughs> Somebody find a larger hat for Louis. You look foolish, man. Tell me I look foolish. You don't ever tell me I look foolish again. A piece for everybody. And an extra big piece for you, Lieutenant. Hey, there he is. There's Louis. Oh, my. Louis, <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it. Now you and I try all the time. Look at Lewis. Are you serious? 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 Are you then you still believe that Lewis Humes is guilty of the Marcus Nelson murders? We still say that he knew details that only the murderer could know. You and I are interested in having a clean, decent place in which to live, right? It is dreadful to think that in this country, I mean right here in Brooklyn, a woman can be taken, grabbed right off the street, assaulted, and an attempt made to rape her. We are going to proceed with the rape charges against Lewis Humes. Why don't you let the kid go, Mario? Has he been through enough? Donnie, make sure I get the superintendent of corrections in Albany. Make sure I get him before he goes to lunch. And I'm sorry I can't let him go, Theo. We've got an eyewitness identification, and we can't let a rapist on the streets. He's no rapist. And you know it. <sighs> Theo, I really feel sorry for you. I know you went out on a limb.
face. Nail those humes by the button. And all the time, the FBI report in your desk. The kid wasn't given a lineup. An hysterical woman looking at him through a peephole. Description, missing on all important points. And even if he was guilty, what was he supposed to have done? Gone up to a woman and yelled some dirty words? Theo, you think the boy is innocent? I think he's guilty. You can't admit to yourself that he's innocent. You want to know why? Because to admit it, you'd have to admit how corrupt you really are. You and I no longer have anything to say to each other. The right man on the right job. You know, I've never been naive about human beings. But it's a surprise that people will let this kid go down the drain. And you want to know what overwhelms me? They don't see anything wrong in it. So what's going to happen now? I don't know. They're going to try to prove you're guilty of something. Makes them look too bad if you aren't. Hello. Just in time. The judge has gone in. I still can't get used to wearing my glasses in the rain. Hello, Lewis. How are you? Hello. How the hell can you say hello to him? I guess he was just trying to get ahead. What do you say, Jake? They brought out the same old witnesses again. He tried to rape me. He knows it. I know it. And God knows it. Black talked about his 19 citations. Jacarino reluctantly and distastefully put in a knife again. But nobody cared anymore. There was no packed courtroom. And I felt that nobody really believed that Lewis Humes was guilty. He had to be found guilty to protect reputations. It was as though we were all sleepwalkers watching a terrible pageant that nobody cared about anymore. Lewis Humes was found guilty of attempted rape. Sentence, five to 10 years. <coughs> but I didn't do nothing. I understood for the first time what Jake Winehouse meant when he said, when there is no justice, there's violence. I remember the first time I walked the beat. I felt we were doing the most wonderful job in the world. I thought of us as watchers of the city protecting what was best in it. Some people say the community gets the police force it deserves. I say the police force is the community. That was the end of the Humes case. Except for the fact that it changed my life and yours. The Lewis Humes case was cited in the Miranda decision of the Supreme Court, which demands that his constitutional rights be read to a man under arrest. Matt Black? Still working as a police detective, Mario Portello was elected an assemblyman. Louis Humes, still in jail today for an offense that normally a man without a previous record would be given a suspended sentence. As for me, you know, there's a dream I keep having. I walk into McNeil's office, right? I throw my badge on his desk, and then I tell him where he can stick it. The truth is, I still go on. 23rd Precinct. Right, right away. I still go on Colin Squeals. People like Teddy, who was convicted of killing two girls because he may have been terrified of going back to prison. And Lewis Humes, who never had a chance from the beginning. With their heads in the clouds And they never break through to the sky Hey Lord, don't you let me be as blind As some people living and wondering why 
Some people listen to what folks are saying And some people only can talk But I've got to please me and know where I'm going Don't give me a road I can't walk Don't give me a road I can't walk Don't give me a path I can't handle Don't give me a song I can't sing Like the road I can't walk Leading to nothing Some folks get by on what I can't rely on And never break through to the truth Well, I got to know me And love what I must be Before I can 